Hello and welcome to your Focus on Sports. I'm Ryan Jones. And I'm Tyler Van Dyke. Fresno State's most famous twins are now going to play for the University of Miami. After a month of being in the transfer portal, Haley and Hannah Cavender found their new home in Florida. The Cavenders were the, were the Bulldogs' highest scores in the Mountain West, with Haley being named the Mountain West Player of the Year for the 2020-2021 season. This now puts the women's basketball team in the state of uncertainty with their million dollar stars gone. Our Fresno State women's water polo team is the Golden Coast Conference champions for the second year in a row. Playing down in Riverside, California, the dogs took down California Baptist and San Diego State before playing Loyola Marymount University for the conference title. The dogs finished off LMU with an end score of 11 to eight. This capping off the most wins in a Fresno State water polo season ever. The team now waits to know their fate in the NCAA tournament. Fresno State women's tennis team is the new Mountain West regular season champions. They beat Boise State 4-1 on Friday afternoon in Boise. They are ranked for the ninth consecutive week, 67th in the ITA collegiate tennis ranking. The women's tennis team will be the number one seed going into the Mountain West championship tournament today. Red Wave, get ready. Fresno State football is back in Bulldog Stadium. Saturday is the first chance to see the 2022 Bulldogs in action for their annual spring preview. This is also the first chance we get to see Coach Jeff Tedford in his return to the sidelines for the Dogs. This is free, but you'll have to pay to park and tailgate. That, sound, that starts at 9 in the morning. Tickets are $10. The fun doesn't stop with a scrimmage. There will be a Bulldog Boulevard block party afterwards so everyone can get in the Bulldog spirit. Fresno's Focus on Sports reporter Mark Anthony Lopez joins us to preview the upcoming spring game. Mark, what do you uh, got for us? Look, spring preview is finally here. We can rejoice. Bulldog fans, we get our first official look at the 2022 Bulldogs. Coach Tefford's back. Jake Hayner is back. Jordan Mims is back. There's a ton of people back with the Bulldogs this season. And I kid you not, guys, this is going to be an exciting season, season, season for the Bulldogs. I think expectations are high, especially with the amount of people that are coming back. Albeit we had some a shaky off season, but this coming off season is going to be pretty exciting. And with everyone's first look at the Bulldogs, you get to tailgate, you get to, you know, enjoy vintage days. It's around, you know, we're surrounded by so much going on this weekend. I know Bulldog fans are going to be very, very excited for uh, this spring preview. Yeah, I think, um, you know, everyone wants to talk about the offense and everybody coming back for the offense, but the defense is someone that they stood out a lot in this uh, last Alumni Day scrimmage that they had. Uh, specifically, David Perales, he's put on a few pounds this year. Um, Jay Kaner noticed and mentioned that he thinks the defensive line is much improved as well. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm very excited for both sides of the field, for sure. I think, uh, you know, the Bulldogs, like I said earlier, high expectations. It's a, it's a tough schedule. It's an exciting schedule. I think there's going to be a lot to be look out for for the Bulldogs this season. Thanks for joining us, Mark. Thank you. Coming up after the break, we take a look at what the baseball and softball teams did this weekend. And we'll preview tonight's NFL Draft. At Fresno State, being bold means committing to something greater than yourself. It's learning by doing and nurturing leaders to advance our shared future. It's using research to create a better life for those around us and healing those who need us most. These are our stories because at Fresno State, bold begins here. Success. At Fresno State, it's no secret. It's discovering new ways to change our world. It's creating opportunities as diverse as our community itself. It's in the distinction of our graduates as they lead us into the future. Success is no secret at Fresno State. It's our mission. The Fresno State baseball team lost two out of three games this past weekend. The Dogs lost Friday. It was rough. The score was 21 to 5, but the Dogs did manage to rack up nine hits in the game with one error. The second game was the bright spot of the road trip. They won 14 to 12 on Saturday. 
Those 14 runs came off 19 hits, managing to avoid a late comeback for Air Force, who scored two runs in the bottom of the ninth. The Dogs lost the series finale Sunday 9-15, closing out their weekend series. The Dogs' next series starts tomorrow against San Diego State in Fresno. Miguel Cabrera is now in a club that only six other people are a part of. He is now part of the 3,000 hit club and 500 home run club. Miggy, as they call him, is the first Venezuelan born player to collect 3,000 hits. This, is just, this just adds to Cabrera's Hall of Fame career with two MVPs and the first one to hit for the Triple Crown in 45 years. After the hit, he was surrounded by players and his family. The Tigers went on to win 13 zip versus the Rockies. Fresno State softball swept the Colorado State Rams at Margie Wright Diamond this past weekend. The Dogs earned a 6-4 victory on Friday night. Alicia Denby led the way going 3-4 through, going three for four with two RBIs in the win. In the second game of the series, the Dogs secured the win with a 4-3 victory. Denby once again led the way going 2-3. for three. In the series finale, the Dogs earned the sweep over the Rams winning 6-3. Denby crushed a two-run homer to cap off her great weekend. The NBA playoffs are heating up, and there are three series that can go either way. The New Orleans Pelicans came back after being down 2-1 in the series against the Phoenix Suns, winning 118-103. Brandon Ingram led his team in points and assists, finishing the game with 30 points, 5 assists, and 4 rebounds. The Denver Nuggets were able to keep their season alive, coming back from being down 3-0. They were led by the Joker with 37 points, 8 rebounds, and 6 assists. The NFL draft is upon us and the Jacksonville Jaguars are on the clock. Las Vegas is set to host the, ver the draft for the very first time after postponement in 2020 due to COVID-19. For NFL fans like Braulio Flores, the NFL draft is a highly anticipated event that they look forward to every year. I look forward to the draft because I really want to know what a uh, college football player my team is going to draft, as well as uh, finding out what other ball players the, uh, the other teams are drafting as well. NFL fans like Flores will be getting their wish as Las Vegas is the host city for the draft, which will kick off on April 28th. Vegas is perfect, I think. Um, it's definitely a party city, so it's exciting. Um, <clears throat> The Raiders also, they, they prove that it's definitely a football city, you know, so that's also really exciting. Unlike past drafts, this one has no clear cut number one pick. The Jacksonville Jaguars hold the pick, but drafted their franchise quarterback last year at number one in Trevor Lawrence. The mock draft does say that they're looking for a defensive end. Uh, I think that's a good move just because I feel like their last good defensive end was uh, Unique Gakwe, and I feel like they just literally just a hand packing for nothing. So I feel like that's like should be their main uh, goal at this very moment. Aiden Hutchinson and Trayvon Walker are considered the two players most likely to be the pick for the Jaguars, unless they trade back. With the NFL draft just three days away, the mystery and speculation surrounding this particular draft is going to make it one of the most memorable in recent memory. Will Aiden Hutchinson go first overall? Will it be Trayvon Walker? Will a quarterback even be selected inside the top 10? To find out the answers to these questions, tune into the NFL Draft, Thursday night at 5 p.m. For Focus on Sports, I'm Octavio Maria. We welcome back Mark Anthony Lopez, and we're going to be doing something a little special for today's show. Tonight is the NFL Draft, so we want to do a mock draft of the first 10 picks of the draft. So let's kick it off. The Jacksonville Jaguars have the number one overall pick. I will, I will, let's make a quick note real quick. We are currently, we have created our own mock draft thanks to, uh, what is it, PFF? PFF. PFF, PFF. website. Uh, we have it currently on our laptops right now. So we're going to be going off of our own picks. We'll be passing it around to each other. Uh, just going off our first pick, our second pick, our third pick. And, and we then, will only be doing picks one through 10. This is true. So the number one overall pick, I have Trayvon Walker, the edge rusher out of Georgia. He right now is the betting favorite. 
Uh, it's not what I would do. I want to know what your guys' opinion on Walker is. I think I would like him to fall a little bit. I like Hutch Morrism, but this is a predictive mock. That's what I think is going to happen. I don't see that happening. I honestly don't. I think the Jacksonville Jaguars need to continue to build around Trevor, Trevor Lawrence, and you have to get an offensive tackle. Lawrence was tack sacked too many times during the uh, la season last year. It just was not what you'd expect from Trevor Lawrence. Trevor yeah. Lawrence obviously is a far more athletic quarterback. He's able to kind of get out of the pocket and you know when he has time he can make magic happen. He definitely needs an improved I, line. And you need yeah. the line. I, I just don't see an edge going to the Jaguars. Sure that and I personally believe the Jaguars have a solid defense already. So I don't just don't see the need for uh, you said this was a betting favorite for Yeah he is the overall betting favorite according mm -hmm. to most sports book. Yeah. Trevor that, I don't see that happening. What do you got? So I have uh, Ikeem Ekwanu from North Carolina State, the offensive tackle. Uh, I believe, like I said, I just mentioned a second ago, I think that having a offensive tackle or just an offensive lineman for Trevor Lawrence is going to be a huge help for the Jaguars, and it's just one piece. We, and if you really think about it, the Bengals kind of did the same thing with Joe Burrow. Burrow mm -hmm. was able to finally get yep. a line th th thanks to the draft. Mm -hmm. And albeit it, it's rookies and stuff like that, they're always, you never know. You never know, yeah. But you take a, uh, take a, take a shot at the best tackle on the board, especially with your first pick, I think you just, it's a no-doubter to protect Trevor Lawrence. Who do you got at number one, Tyler? I also have Trayvon Walker, um, mainly just because every mock draft board you see, it's Trayvon Walker at number one. Um, whether they do need offensive linemen, I would agree with that. But Trayvon Walker just seems to be the clear-cut number one. Number two, uh, the Detroit Lions. Uh, I like their coach, Dan Campbell. I'm going to go with Aiden Hutchinson, edge rusher out of Michigan. Um, if he's there at two, I think they pulled the trigger. No questions asked. He's from Michigan. Uh, so there you go. I was a toss-up on this one. It was either Thibodeau or uh, Hutchinson, but I went Hutchinson as well for mine. We are all in agreement on pick number two. I went with Hutchinson as well. So for number three, I'll take the, the, the reins on this. I'm very big on offensive linemen, as you can tell. I was very passionate about uh, Ekwanu, and I think the Houston Texans are going to go with um, Evan Neal for pick three. I got Sauce Gardner. Uh, I think you do too. I also Tyler. have Sauce Gardner. Yes. Uh, they need the Texans have holes all over. I think that you get a surefire corner in there. Um, I don't know if Evan Neal is necessarily a need. They have Titus Howard at right tackle. They have Laramie Tunsil as a stud. Uh, yeah. At four, I got Kayvon Thibodeau going to the Jets. I don't know if yeah. it will happen, but he's a guy that's into his money. He's into his brand. I think that he really wants to build his brand and New York City's perfect for Yeah, great big market for that. I also have Thibodeau going to number four. This is where I differ. I have Charles Cross going at number four. Um, I have heard the Jets do not want Kayvon Thibodeau. Um, they're not very interested in him. Which is and interesting. Therefore, I have Charles Cross who actually goes above Ekem in my draft. I also have Charles, I have Charles Cross going to the, to the sister uh, team the across the, well not five. really the same stadium actually yeah I have him okay. going to the Giants I think you know the everything I feel like the Giants need a whole ton of help so I think um, tr cross is the way to go there uh, I got Evan Neal so I agree with you with the tackle I think we all three have a tackle. uh, different tackles yeah. going there I have Ecom at number five uh, ah, okay. Carolina at six is really interesting they have offensive line help they also need a quarterback I don't think a quarterback is going to go there though. I think they make a move for a veteran like Jimmy G or Baker Mayfield. So I got Charles Cross, the best pack passing uh, protector in the draft. I have Ahmad Gardner going, number six, from Cincinnati. He picks Sauce. Yeah. The Panthers, okay. Yeah. Interesting. It just makes sense, of the vibes of the Panthers. You know? Yeah, um, I have another tackle Moore. going to the Panthers. I have Evan Neal out of Alabama at number six. You know, I think for number seven, uh, continuing with just the more swagger look and just, you know, bringing you know, big New York market, we'll just keep going. Um, quickly, uh, I have Kyle Hamilton going to the Giants. Uh, I'll be at this one, maybe a pick that gets moved around and stuff like that, but you know, we'll, we'll figure it out as time goes on. If you'd like to see uh, more of our top 10 picks, here they are, a couple spicy little trades in there as well. And that is our show. Thank you for tuning in. We'll be back next week to bring you more in your weekly focus on sports. Go dogs. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha